Howdy and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be talking about whether or not you can use deadly force to protect against property, somebody else's property, and minors and firearms. So in the wake of the Kyle Rittenhouse incident in Kenosha, Wisconsin, there's been a bunch of horrible information going around. People saying, oh, well, he illegally acquired that firearm or he shouldn't have had it in the first place or he wasn't even defending his own property. Guys, we're gonna talk about that, mainly from a Texas perspective. I have done some research on Wisconsin law and there are a bunch of parallels. So before we start, we're gonna talk about the use of deadly force for self-defense. Most states all say this about when you can use deadly force in self-defense. You can use it against the attempted use of unlawful force and also to prevent robbery, aggravated robbery, sexual assault, aggravated sexual assault, kidnapping, murder, and aggravated assault. Every single state essentially says that. So if something is occurring that meets that definition, don't matter what state you are in, you are good to go. But let's talk about defense of your own property. Wisconsin law is pretty dang close to Texas law and that yes, they do allow you to use deadly force to protect property. Texas actually has some very liberal laws when it applies to using deadly force to protect against property. But let's talk about where they are the same. So this is what Texas reads. You can use deadly force to protect your property when and to the degree that you reasonably believe that deadly force is immediately necessary to prevent the other's imminent commission. So essentially what that means is somebody else is about to commit this act to prevent the other's imminent commission of arson, burglary, robbery, aggravated robbery, and this is where Texas is different, theft during the nighttime. Wisconsin law explicitly prohibits the intentional use of deadly force for the sole purpose of defense of one's property. That being said, if somebody's about to burn your house down, if somebody's about to burgle your house, or commit robbery, then yes, you are justified in using deadly force to protect against your own property. And also, your home, your vehicle, and your place of business and employment all apply. Essentially, they are linked all together. They are all treated with the same respect. So long story short, guys, yes, you can use deadly force to protect your own property. Even when we start talking about arson or whatnot, and I'm not even going to get into mob violence, disparity of force, any of that stuff. You gotta look at arson and some of these other acts. That is illegal use of force. So a lot of this stuff goes back into the applications of deadly force for self-defense. Now let's talk about can you use deadly force to protect somebody else's property? Yes, you can. When can you do so? Well, when the other person explicitly requests your protection or your assistance, or if you have a legal right to protect the other properties. So for instance, if you have some family living in another house, then you might have a legal right to protect them. But once again, guys, if somebody explicitly asks for your help, for your assistance, yes, you are justified in using deadly force to protect somebody else's property. Now let's talk about minors and firearms. So in order to buy or own a firearm, which is a rifle, shotgun, anything other than a handgun, you've got to be 18 years of age or older. Owning or buying a handgun is 21. That's in every single state. Now, Texas, a minor is anybody 17 years of age or younger. Wisconsin is pretty much the same thing. They've got some different age brackets in there that allow you to do a couple more things as you get older, but essentially 17 and younger, you're considered a minor. So in Texas, can a minor have in their possession a firearm? Yep. Wisconsin also has some provisions that allow for it as well. I encourage you to go read that yourself. When can a minor possess a firearm in Texas? Well, when they are supervised by a person older than 18 years of age for hunting, sporting, or other lawful purposes. Other lawful purposes to me, that means second amendment kind of stuff. So you can interpret that however you want to. Also, when can a minor possess a firearm? If it consisted of lawful defense by the child of people or property. So in Texas, yes, a child can have access to a firearm if it meets some certain criteria, 
Wisconsin has a bunch of provisions in their law that allow for that as well. So if y'all want to start a debate down below whether or not you think Mr. Rittenhouse was in the wrong, if he did a great job. Guys, are we even going to talk about, regardless of whether or not you think he was in the right or the wrong, look at who we shot. Three people, one was a felon, one was a pedophile, and one was a multi-time repeat offender of domestic violence. That's pretty good target selection if you ask me. But guys, debate what you want to down below. Go ahead and knock yourselves out. But we are in some very, very different times, very weird times right now. Like I said, I don't want to get into mob violence, disparity of force. That's a completely different video, guys. But nonetheless, watch out for yourselves, protect yourselves, protect your family, be ready if the time comes, but more important, be safe, be smart, and when you need to, be skilled.